So far we looked at how we can transform primary and secondary alcohols into their carbonyl counterparts by using chromium trioxide in the presence of pyridine. Now we're going to discuss how we can transform alcohols that contain two hydroxyl groups known as 1,2-diols into their carbonyl counterpart by using a process known as oxidative cleavage. So basically we take our general 1,2-diol, we mix it with sodium pyridate and we produce two carbonyl molecules so these can be aldehydes they can be formaldehydes or ketones depending on what these initial R groups are we also produce water as well as this molecule here so let's take a look at the reaction mechanism to this reaction so basically an intermediate in this reaction includes a five membered ring as we'll see in just a moment so let's begin with step number one so we take our sodium pyridate which basically has the following structure we have four oxygen molecules attached to our iodide and three of these oxygens are double bonded Bonded. one of them has a single bond so this contains a negative charge and so this negative charge because this has a negative charge we have the sodium that basically attaches to it via electrostatic forces so in the first step we have one of these hydroxyl groups uses its oxygen the lone pairs of it on its oxygen to basically form a covalent bond between the oxygen and our iodide and that that displaces one of these pi bonds and places the two electrons on our oxygen so we form the following intermediate so we have a negative charge on this oxygen and a positive charge on the oxygen right next to it because this contains an H atom now in the next step we have a proton transfer this H is transferred from this oxygen onto this oxygen and that removes this positive charge and this negative charge so we form the following slightly more stable intermediate molecule because now we have less charges on our molecule now in the third step we have the formation of a ring structure a five membered ring the second oxygen on the second hydroxyl group of the alcohol molecule of the 1,2-diol basically forms another covalent bond between the second oxygen and our iodide and that displaces this pi bond and places those two electrons onto this oxygen and so we form the following intermediate that contains a five member ring so once again as in this case this has a positive charge on this oxygen and a negative charge on this oxygen and because we have charge that isn't very stabilizing so in step number four we have the transfer of a proton so this H atom is transferred from this oxygen onto this oxygen and that removes our charges so now we have this five member ring and we no longer have our two charges on this oxygen and this oxygen because that H atom has been transferred now in the next step in the fifth step we have the formation of our carbonyl molecules two carbonyl molecules are formed because these bonds rearrange so basically this bond here the covalent bond between these two carbons breaks off and forms a pi bond between this carbon and this oxygen that displaces this bond and places those two electrons onto the iodide and that displaces this bond here which forms a pi bond between this carbon and this oxygen so we form the following two carbonyl compounds as well as this molecule that contains the oxygens and our iodide as well as the sodium that floats close by to this oxygen because it has a negative charge now in step number six we basically form our water mo or we don't form the water molecule yet but we want to form the water molecule because according to this reaction one of the final products is in fact a water molecule so that means one of these OH groups 
has to leave. But hydroxy, hydroxyl group, is not a very good leaving group. We have to first convert it into a good leaving group. Now, so that basically means this has to add an H atom onto the oxygen. But where does the H atom come from? Well, notice that one of the products, NaIO3, doesn't have an H. And we have two H's here. So basically, one of the H's on this oxygen is transferred onto the oxygen of this hydroxyl group and we form the following intermediate. Now we have a good leaving group attached to our iodide, this water molecule, and so this bond, because it's weak, it dissociates and it leaves our iodide. And so when this takes place, or actually the way that this takes place is this oxygen here uses its lone pair of electrons to form a positive bond with our iodide and that displaces the good leaving group kicking it off and we form the following three products. So we form our two carbonyl groups, which once again could be formaldehyde, aldehyde, or ketone. That depends on the type of R groups that we begin with. If these are H's, we're going to get formaldehyde. If these are both methyl, we're going to get our ketone. If one of them is an H, the other one is a methyl, we're going to get our aldehyde. We also form this molecule here in which the iodide basically has as our three oxygens, two of these oxygens are double bonded. We also have the lone pair of electrons and we have one of these oxygens that bears a negative charge and so it associates closely with our sodium that contains a positive and finally a water molecule is also formed. So we basically see that by treating one, two diols, alcohols that contain two hydroxyl groups with sodium pyridate, we can transform this alcohol into two different types of carbonyl molecules. So we can either have formaldehyde, aldehyde, or ketone, depending on a type of R groups that are present on our initial starting material, our initial one, two diol.